You're listening to the NC Food and Beverage Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Visit Joko. Johnston County, North Carolina, affectionately known as Joko, is located just 30 minutes east of Raleigh. Great for a day trip or weekend excursion. Joko offers an emerging culinary and craft beverage scene rooted in rich agricultural heritage. Travel one of our unique food trails, visit a family farm, and relax at one of several chef-owned eateries. Joko is also soon to be home to two brand new food halls. Go to johnstoncountync.org for more info and come explore Joko for yourself. Am I the black sheep for not listening to podcasts? I feel terrible. Yeah, everyone hates you now. (laughs) This is the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and hitting subscribe on your friend's phone without them knowing. Coming to you from the kitchen studios in downtown Raleigh. This episode is sponsored in part by Blue Shark Vodka. All the taste without the bite. Blue Shark Vodka coming out of Wilmington, North Carolina. And by Spot On, tech that helps your business grow. And Joe Van Gogh Coffee, serving the community from seed to cup. And now, faking it for nearly five years, it's Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And for all of those that are listening now, how many of you, and you can raise your hand, we can see you, uh, have thought to yourself, damn, I just don't really enjoy those gluten pastries, those gluten-free pastries that, you know, that they bring out, or my spouse or my friend makes me eat. It's and then, good for gluten. Yeah, it's good for gluten. Gluten-free. And then there's the other part of you who are like, no, I need my gluten-free pastries because I'm gluten intolerant, or I might have celiacs or something, and, uh, and then you can't enjoy what Everybody else is happening because nobody's considerate enough to make gluten-free pastries. Well, guess what? We are considerate. And we have the man here who in North Carolina is world-renowned for his gluten-free bakery. That's Joe Parker. You know him as JP from JP's Pastry. Hello, Joe. Good morning, guys. (laughs) Do you ever go by Joe? Um, It depends. You know, sometimes it's just, hey, you, in the kitchen. (laughs) So, yeah. That always works. Right, right. Matt, that was quite an intro. It's almost like you're married to someone whose plight is to be gluten intolerant. I know. It's it's almost like I have uh, three family members, you know, that are gluten intolerant (laughs) and that we always have to consider for. Yeah, did Sarah write the intro this time? Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah, she wrote it. (laughs) She's like, actually, little little known fact, Sarah writes all of the intros. Yeah. 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 Everything that Matt says, it's all pre-scripted by his wife. Yep. Yeah, well, JP, or Joe, or whatever you want to go by, the pastry master, right. <laughs> thank you for coming in uh, in the studio here at the kitchen. Thank you guys for having me. We are uh, super excited to have you here. We were just doing a uh, a recap of how we know each other. We realized that over these uh, years, it's kind of like a joke, it wasn't even intended to say the uh, fake it for the last five years, but as Matt and I are getting close to our five-year anniversary of doing this podcast, we've realized that over those years... That uh, we've encountered each other, JP's Pastries, and, right. and and just us as humans over the years, just because you you've been a fixture in this community, in the Triangle and the outskirts of it. Back in the day when I was the GM at Standard Foods, you were selling the pastries into the grocery area. We've dined uh, some champagne dinners. We've had uh, where was that again? That was at at Royale. Royale. At Royale. That's right. The uh, closed now. Shuttered the now Royale. shuttered Royale. So right. sad. But you've been making pastries that just happen to be gluten free. But that's almost like like you know you say this to like a someone that's um, a meat eater when you hand them a vegan dish. You're just like try this, and then they eat it and they love it. <gasps> Guess what? Yeah, it's vegan. You know, and then like you you super you get super impressed when they like it. I think that's the mentality I have when I when I try any of your pastries because you just don't know. And then when you're told, you're wildly satisfied. So right. let's or, get into it. Or surprised. Yeah yeah, you're, yeah. yeah. You're like, okay, this actually, like, this could be good. That sounds great. So let's let's talk about it. You, you're you coming out of, your, your home base is in Benson? Benson, yes. Which yes. is in Johnston County. Right. We are proud to be from Johnston County. Heck yeah. And uh, have uh, our business, which, you know, it started in my home, actually, in Raleigh. 2012, 2013, but we moved to Johnson County in 2015. Uh, we were, uh, we couldn't sustain orders out of my home. So uh, the property was available, the middle of downtown Benson, you know, we, we started with, I think, three employees 
uh, down there, and now I think we have over 20. So we've got a huh. really good, good crew. Um, we brought a lot of jobs to downtown Benson. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, now we're kind of a stop for everybody going to the beach, you know, traveling north or south on 95 has really become people have called it destination they've called it a mecca gluten-free mecca <laughs> you know it's it, it never thought it would ever turn into this ever yeah you even said before we were off mics that and anybody traveling yeah has said yes. you the billboard catches their eye and then hey there's well, a reason to go to benson in johnston county right and it you know it's not even that it's the gluten-free forums the that just if you're traveling south on 95 or going north from miami or new york you stop you gotta stop and they do yeah and, and they they load up <laughs> so let's Let's take it to the genesis of your business. You intentionally started as a gluten free because I guess as a kid you had you realized you were gluten intolerant. Right. Uh, diagnosis was in ninety six. Okay. And uh, which you know, were they doing that back then? No, no. This was a very uh, progressive doctor in the neurological sciences hospital in Chapel Hill that had seen me grow up. He just immediately freshman year of college in Chapel Hill. He said no, no dairy, no wheat, no eggs. I always listened to him. I never questioned, yeah. you know, what it was. Like, what was happening? Like, what I caused just, you to go? So I was having ma uh, major reactions in my sinuses. Mm. Uh, I would get swelling. My throat would swell. Um, and he just said, I want you off of it. And it, it was, when I look back, I think it was a little sad because my birthday would come around. The first year I had the cardboard cake, you know, that was awful. <laughs> sure. And then the second year I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm eating r real cake and I'm just going to take some Benadryl and I'll take the inflammation down. And, I mean, you know, who should have to you know do that I yeah mean, who should have to did you notice like immediately did your with this kind of diet change like oh absolutely what happened to you absolutely i just i could breathe it was just clear i wasn't tired and lethargic and sleepy grades went up i mean it was just it was a kind of and it was tough mm. i was in a fraternity you know i couldn't have beer or pizza mm. but you know yeah. i mean i did it it was it was it was back then it was not an issue. I didn't want to make a scene about it. I just knew when I went out to eat, I, I had rice or potatoes. Yeah, you, right. You know, I just didn't eat the bread. Um, as we kept going through college, he would do more testing, more blood tests. It was all blood testing he was doing. And he would say, look, you can have something that doesn't rise. You can do crackers. You can do flat things. If it rises in bread, no. Not at all. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I, but he, he was a neurological specialist. ENT, ear, nose, and throat. Yeah. Yes. Which is strange because when you think of gluten intolerance, you always. Uh, digestive. To, yes. Gastro Celiac is digestive. Yeah. Mine was, com was all sinus related, mm. completely all sinus related. As I got through college and out of college, I knew things I could tolerate, things I couldn't. Again, I'd never heard of celiac ever. I just knew what made me feel better and what didn't and what to avoid. So yeah. I just did. Um, I think the the tough part was when I finally I just got fed up by about 2010 11 I was like you know this is this is to you know it, there's got to be an answer so I went back to pastry school um, fumbled through I think I only tried two things I made there of course with Benadryl chased it with a Benadryl you know a couple right. of Benadryls um, but everybody I could smell it and I could feel it you know and I could you know it's you have other people try it, you know, and you get through. And uh, luckily at the time, it was 2012, they had a two-week stint on gluten-free training that they don't even offer anymore because of cross-contamination. Ah. And I always tell the story of my professor, and she had to start with 17 different flowers. We had to do starters, and then we had to let the starters grow, and then we had to make breads from each flower. At the end of two weeks, everything tasted like garbage because with gluten-free, you can't use one flower. You've got to do a blend of mm. flowers. And so it was one of those exercises I feel like not a lot of people are able to experience, but that I went through it. It made me realize, wow, this is what I need. You know, So I would come home and so, start. So that, that right there is the nutshell of your secret? Is that it? It's a, blend, well, it's a blend of flowers. Everyone, I think if you're gluten-free, you know it's not just one single flower. Yeah, I mean, duh, duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, I'm, how I'm did kidding. I, I know that. I didn't yeah. know yes. that. Yeah. So. So, so it's just a blend. Yeah, it's so a blend, blend. blend of different flowers. So I started working with different flowers at home at night, you know, after work and just trying to figure out what was going to work for me and what I liked. Again, I wasn't selling anything like that. I mean, I was just kind of, you know. And um, honestly, our first big break was downtown Raleigh, uh, Cafe de los Muertos. 
which is closed now. Oh yeah, it's gone. It's um, where uh, where the place of the table is it, now. Yes, yes, yeah. but they Cafe started. De los Muertos. Is yes, Muerte. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, but he, the owner, brought us in. You know, and we were. The, I was thinking, oh, he'll order every other week or so. And literally day one of opening, he's calling me. I'm at my real job, and he's like, hey, I'm out of stuff. You gotta, you gotta get me some more stuff. So I leave work and run home, and we're we're baking all night. And this happens every day for a week. And I'm like, what is going on? Um, you know. I, I was just making stuff for me. I didn't really think it was, you know, going to be anything like this. But hmm. that was kind of the first start. How did you meet the owner of Cafe de los Muertos, and how did? He... So I, I took. I finally said, okay, I'm going to start a coffee shop. I avoided it for a long time because I just, you know, once you start, you can't take a vacation. You can't, you can't have a real life. You've got to, you know, yeah, you got to keep the momentum. Yeah. So I just went down. I actually came downtown to several coffee shops with samples and said, hey. You know, I would like to maybe make a couple gluten-free options for you, you know, just so you have, you can include everyone. That's kind of our mission statement is everyone's included at the table. Everyone, you know, mm-hmm. no one feels like they can't eat. Yeah. So, um, and he just said, no, I want to use all you. I just want everything to be gluten-free. I don't, I can't even tell this is gluten-free. That's so amazing. I just want, and I'm not even going to tell people it's gluten-free. I'm just going to put it out. So like, um, he was literally convinced day one, first bite, first, that's it. first scone, first muffin. And that was it. That was it. That's that was impressive. Because I kind of have this rule: I don't want to sell something I myself wouldn't eat. Right. So yeah, you know that that's kind of the goal of what we do. Is if if I'm not going to eat it, then I'm not going to sell it. What was your day job? Well, hold on. Oh. I want to get into what his day job is and all that too. But we first need to take Ooh. a quick little break. Yeah, well, we'll tease a little bit before we get into the rest of JP's history. I like it when you tease. Yeah, because I want to talk about something smooth, man. Mm. Real smooth. Talking about the world's smoothest Blue Shark vodka. Oh. Yeah. Which is, oddly enough, not made from, or coincidentally enough, not made from flour or wheat or anything that would have gluten in it. It's made from non-GMO heirloom variety North Carolina sweet corn, which is distilled four times into perfection. Now, there always is that debate about whether liquor is gluten-free or not, and I'm going to ask JP his, his opinion, but not right now. When we get, we'll get out of this to. spot about if liquor is, uh, you know, has gluten or not, because, it, you know, there's there's different theories on that. It's a small batch process, which is a labor of love after distilling four times the mash mellows for 28 days, allowing flavors to fully bloom and awaken. Finally, each batch is triple filtered, giving the vodka a smooth, clean finish, making the alcohol bite nearly vanish. This is earned Blue Shark Vodka's the clever nickname, the shark that doesn't bite. Non-GMO, heirloom sweet corn, blue shark vodka. Enjoy it. And, you know, JP, also on this podcast, we do talk to all sorts of food people, restaurateurs, and lots of them are making innovative new pastries like yourself or other gluten-free or vegan or non-dairy dishes. Uh, but the one thing that they're all doing is they're – turning that love of food into a business and that can be the bigger challenge and so our sponsor spot on works with popular local restaurants like the ruddy duck tavern and the village market in eastern north carolina and gets them set up with the technology they need to stay competitive in the industry just like when you were starting out if you had this you would realize it's the kind of tech that the chain down the street is already using but it's made specifically for your business, like a cloud-based point of sale system that not only takes orders and payments, but also ties in online ordering for takeout and delivery. Then it breaks down all the data so you can tweak your menu and set your staff schedule. From fine dining to food trucks to pastry shops, Spot On's integrated restaurant management system can help make running a restaurant less stressful and more successful. And you can get this end-to-end solution built specifically for your needs by a real person, Tanya Maniwo. She's a local Spot On account executive, and she'll be your partner the whole step of the way. Give her a call, 858-213-7820, or just email her, Tanya M, T-A-N-Y-A-M, at SpotOn.com. Yes, I'll repeat that for you, JP. No okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yeah, just look at the link in our uh, show notes for any more information. And you know, as uh, Matt was beautifully just speaking off the top of his head about spot on, I was pouring some coffee. And normally we'll talk about Joe Van Gogh a little bit later, but there's a need because I've got in my hand Ooh, JP's 
pastry, gluten free pumpkin blondie. Just it's just looking at me, and I'm just gonna open it. Call I want to have me with coffee. I want to have this with coffee. coffee. <laughs> yeah, because we're talking about Joe Van Gogh coffee, and this in particular is the Cafe Feminino, which uh, you can check out at cafefeminino.com. This is giving women their fair share since 2003. Cafe Feminino, which is part of Joe Van Gogh is a coffee program that is a one-of-a-kind ethical sourcing model committed to ending the cycle of poverty affecting women coffee farmers across the world. Cafe Feminino provides direct compensation to women farmers along with the opportunity and resources to enact positive change in their communities and on their own terms. And so we are drinking a Peruvian blend that is delicious. I highly implore you to try a little bit of this coffee that we just... And you probably had that because... uh, at all of the Joe Van Gogh locations, or you probably had that idea, JP's Pastries are sold there. They are. Isn't that nuts? And yeah. I need to bust out my knife over here to get into yeah, this thing. I was pretty like, much keep it sealed. Yeah. Yeah, like, bring a bring a switchblade when you <laughs> want to open up some JP's Pastry. Right, or just right. a scissor. I mean, yeah. yeah. yeah here we go. Oh so, uh, all right, we're going to get into that. So, JP, tell us what was what was your day job at that point? What were you what were you trained so in school before my, school? My second degree, uh, I graduated from the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill School of Dentistry oh. in two thousand eight. Whoa, a dentist yeah. that makes pastry? Yeah. How it's, dare you? I know it's a cycle, man. <laughs> I'm going to put you back in my chair. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, I had a big science background, so I think that played a lot into understanding on a, I think on just a, more of a molecular level of what was happening with pastries and what, how you, you take it. And, and it's even in school, there were so many things I was, I would explain to the professor about why the reactions were happening. And she's like, I don't know why it happens. I don't care. I'm just teaching you how to do it, you know? So, um, but it did bring a lot, but it was more having that background, I think really helped with, me figuring out how to do what I do now. Yeah, um, I could never do what I do now if I had not been through that program. Um, and you know, it, it was a it was a good experience. But I would I would come home at night, and you know, I actually had the income to afford to buy seventeen different flowers at home and blend them all together to kind of figure out what was going to work. You you were actually practicing as a dentist then? Yes. Or? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, I was actually in practice with my father. Okay. For. Gosh, until about 2016. I tried to do both for a year. I mean, we I would come home and bake all night. I mean, really, two full-time jobs. And all weekend. Bake all weekend. Um, and then it got to the point where we had people baking, you know, for us in the house. And then, you know, teaching them how to do things and how to scale recipes. And, and you know, um, everything is done in grams, obviously. It has to be, you know, precise for costing. Okay. So, right. So back to this idea of mixing flowers. Uh, right. So you're playing around and you're seeing what's the best recipes. Well, and what 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 agreed with me? Yeah. Okay. If that makes sense cuz there's a lot of gluten-free flowers out there mm-hmm. that I personally don't care for. And I know a lot of other people use them. Um, I just there's certain things like personally I don't like millet. I know there's a lot of people that use it. Yeah. I get a bad aftertaste. So there's a bag of millet in my house that I purchased in 2018. Yeah, I haven't, used it I haven't even used that. I know, I know. In my house. <laughs> but it does make some great breads. I just for something that you know, and that I I'm doing and for for what I use, I don't like millet, and like, it's a great it's a great grain. It's just not something more I, savory stuff, maybe. Yeah, and so stronger, more earthy. I mean, you know, um, amaranth is not my favorite. You know, I think at home I use it in one crust I make when I do like a chicken pot pie at home. You know, but I mean, it's just kind of what I'm, whatever I'm making, whatever I'm for texture. I'm a texture person. If it tastes okay, I can eat it. If the texture's, texture's off, right. I just can't yeah. do it. So what you are know? you working with then? So, oh gosh! So what well, are the, what I mean, are the, the approved flowers? The approved flowers. Um, I actually have a Miller in California uh, blend for me because I just don't have the uh, capacity on the East Coast to do what, what they can do out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I work with a, a brown rice, a white rice flour. Um, I have tapioca and sorghum, um, and I'll stop there. There's a few more things we throw in there, but yeah, those are some, some of almond the, flour as well. No, which one? Almond flour? No. So again, you got to think smart. The the more things How you, do you can do keep, that? well, the more <laughs> you don't <laughs> is what you do. T- t- the more you keep out of the blend, the, yeah. the more people you can include. Remember, the the mission is to include everyone. So if I keep mm. nuts out of it, all oh, right, it takes in another Come allergy. On, Matt, get with yeah. it. However, we do have nuts. I, I nuts thought in I our read facility. something yes. about almond flour being used in something, but we do. Uh, 
we I'm trying to think. There might there's one cake I used to use almond flour in, but that's it. Okay. We try to keep nuts out if we can. You know, we try to not use nut flours, not use, you know, a right. lot of things just to, to keep it so it includes more people. And so for each thing, like right. you know, on, on the table here we have a hollow, we have a, a blondie, we have a right. brownie. Yes. Do, are there all different recipes for the flour base as well? It depends, yes. Breads, I use one thing, I use something different for some of the um the pastries, uh something different for biscuits. It just depends on what we're what we're making. Okay. At the time. I wish that blondie was six times bigger than it was. I, I could I, not I, stop <laughs> eating. Oh, is it. it gone? You ate the whole thing. I noticed gone. you were so quiet, which wow. is you I'm like oh. Wait, wow. I get to turn yes. the talk. So this That's one, a we, secret. Yeah. this one, we really, applied. this is a popular one in the fall. This is our basic blondie, and we take uh, <laughs> pumpkin and cream cheese and we swirl it through the blondie yeah. um, with some white chocolate chips. We do keep nuts out of it. Um, Joe oh. Van Gogh normally carries this in the fall as well, so you can get one at Joe Van Gogh. But the pumpkin blondie is very popular. But now my brother-in-law, who has a gourd allergy, can't eat it. Oh Jeez. no! I, I, see. <laughs> So we Does can't he really have a gourd allergy. Really? Really? Yeah, that, I didn't even that, know that was a real that that's is, a thing. It is. It is a thing. Um, any allergy you can imagine, we've had it walk in our doors. We get twice a week minimum. We get people walk into our store with, with tears and start crying because they see things they can eat yeah. and that they've not been able to eat before. When you have just one life to live, you don't want to spend it juggling home repairs, cleaning services, maintenance, and landscaping. You have better things to do with your time. Exhale can help. Exhale is the only trusted partner homeowners need to maintain, clean, fix, and improve their homes. Your dedicated home manager will put your recurring maintenance and cleaning on autopilot and is there for any repairs or improvements. Visit exhaleathome.com to learn more and book a consultation. We'll take it from here. Okay, so the one thing that I think is still, I think a lot of people are doing great gluten-free pizza out there that I've had. Right. But gluten-free bagels, not so much. And especially when we're talking about texture and you're a texture guy. Right, so. right. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to a New York myth. That the will water. be The water. The water, <laughs> man. I mean, I, you know, we you, can't. You don't think that it, wait, you're saying that it is a myth or it's not, you're debunking I'm just saying I don't have that water down here. Yeah. Um, we used to make bagels when we had time and they were delicious. Uh, our distribution has become so big. It, it is, there's certain things we've had to cut. Bagels is one of them. It's a labor of love. It takes all morning. You know, it's three proofs. It's boiling. It's baking. I mean, it's a whole nother process. They're great. We just don't have the time. And right now we don't have the, the labor. Um, I mean, we cannot get more people into work, um, it, and it's been really, it's been a struggle. Um, so th the less people I have, the more items we cut. And so it's just, gotcha. you know, because look, these, you know, Whole Foods, they they place large orders, and we've got to get those out. Max, you know, the back of my entrepreneurial brain is tingling right now. <laughs> oh, wow. The NCF and bagel, you know, like, <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, and, and you know, part of, part of my vacations and my travel always revolve around visiting other cities with gluten-free yeah. um, options. There is a place in New York and I will throw this out there. I've never been called modern, modern bread company. The bagels look amazing and they're gluten-free. Okay. And uh, it's on my list to order. I'm actually out of town this weekend, but next week I want to order some from them. But we're looking at like $80 for probably, you know, a dozen bagels. So it's just, Jeez. I know, but they have to ship them down. And I get it. You know, we stopped shipping because of the delays with FedEx and UPS and the pandemic. So people want our products all over the country and we just don't want to ship. I don't want them getting a five-day-old Hawaiian roll right. because things got delayed. Yeah. yeah. And so, so now you're just going to have to open up more locations. Right. Oh. Franchise. Yeah. 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 That's the way to do it. Right. <laughs> so w just before we get off the bagel topic, right. do you have somebody else that you endorse who does really good gluten-free bagels? I want to try theirs. That that's but anybody in the triangle area oh, or the no. No. Not, the not, no, not, Matt, the, no not, bagels for no. you. Or at not, least you got to go Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Really, yeah, yeah. 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 But you know what? I will be happy to let you know um, when I order how they are because I mean I'm you know, always looking for a great a great bagel. The, this is the, this is the interactive part of our show where like we need people. We need a poll online. Favorite gluten free bagel in the Triangle area or in all of North Carolina for that for that right. matter. Yeah. I mean, Just some, one you can get access to. There's yeah. some yeah. in the stores. Um, yeah. I mean, you know that like the Udi's and stuff oh, like that. And but, in Canyon Ranch and all that. They're just. I don't. They're not great. They're no, not. They're no. not what like the same. They're not the same experience no. that the regular bagel eater is having. Right. And when I look at for me, when I look at food, um, 
is it worth the calories? Because I'm going to tell you the one thing I miss the most in my life that I have lost, my metabolism. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Get well, that's, right. know, we're all about the same age. You were right, talking about right. what year you were in college. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. No, I've, I've, I've already figured that part out. <laughs> right. So, if I look, it's got to be really good if I'm going to, like, consume it. You know, you I'm, like, yeah. Gonna, yeah, I, I'm the worst for tasting something and turning my head politely and spitting it out. Like, I will not, you know. Sure. So let's get let's get back into your operation a little right, bit. So right. when you started, you were the pastry chef. You have expanded. You have now have a team that's right. beside you. But what is your day to day? What do you do? Oh gosh. <laughs> Some days I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I just walk in. I'm like, what am I doing today, guys? Um, I don't even get to bake that much. I mean, I get to bake at home at night when the kids go to sleep, and I can. I, you know, no one's pulling on my legs or anything, and I actually have a time <laughs> yeah. to actually do, you know, do things. But going in and just seeing what the, you know, looking at production, what we're doing for the day, looking at numbers, checking things, making sure things look right. I kind of oversee things more than I actually get to um, bake. Yeah. And be, you know, once in a blue moon, I'll get in there and everyone says, oh, no, he's in here now. You know, what's he making? What kind of a mess <laughs> is he making? You know, so. I get that all the time as a bartender because i more like, you know, a bartender by trade. Right. Right. And then I'll oversee a bar program, and then my bartenders, which at this point, it's kind of a young man's game, a young person's game. It's like you want to want to remember, I was just talking to my wife about fundamentals of business. Like, you want to remember the right. fundamentals. I, I worked for Wolfgang Puck for so long, and at one point, he had revealed, you know, like, he was the CEO of his company and business development, and but he's in these meetings with, like, bank officers and trying to figure out the TI that's going to open up this and the bridge lo loan that's going to go to that and all this stuff when he's like, I am just a chef. I want to just get back on the line, you know? Right, right, <laughs> so right, right. He just go back and say, screw it. He appointed a CFO, a CEO, and then took a position in his own company to where he was opening new restaurants, you know, business development, but really the fun part, like, let me design the kitchen. Let me come up with some recipes with the chef and do the thing right. that got me there. So it's 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 that rub where you're like, it's what I love, but I also can't necessarily do every day if the business is going to succeed. Exactly, exactly. And right yeah. now, it's we are at a catch twenty two. We we want to get new clients. We want to grow. I don't have the the staff to support it. Yeah. So I feel like as long as I can keep the doors open, keep the employees coming in, and keep them happy, and keep everything going, uh, I'm doing great. I, I we don't know what's ahead of us. With with you know with all these uh, businesses that are closing, all these restaurants are shortening hours. You know, my goal right now is just to keep open. It, it, you know, keep a place for people yeah. to come to. When that pandemic hit, when we we had lockdown last March, you know, I looked at the team and I said, "Look, we don't know. This is going to be more than two weeks. It's not going to be you <laughs> yeah. know a two week thing. So either you can come to work and be happy, or you can go sit at home and get depressed and get you know and just overeat <laughs> and just you know yeah and just fatten up. And they all stayed." And we all worked, and you know there were. Well, shorts. you're a you're a business that can thrive on like you're a. There's what, a we're uh, necessity. There's uh, a need. consumer packaged good. You yes. know, so you can so that's purchase a, this stuff. That's another thing that was super odd at when COVID hit. Um, our package we were already prepackaging in our facility, certified gluten free, sealed, you know, in our facility, which to keep gluten out. Yeah. When COVID hit, <laughs> it was to keep COVID out. And people wanted our products because it was already sealed. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have to, you know, worry about it. And grocery stores really kept going. So that really kept us going. You already had your infrastructure. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I want to ask about that, like, in, in two parts. For one, when you talk about your staff and the, the process of baking, uh, I get that you're blending different um, flours and all. But aside from that is the... Is the technique of baking different than say, like, can you pull a, uh, Andrew Olam's team from Union Special and say, okay, now now bake this stuff, or is it a very specific way of baking? It is completely different. It yeah. is any time I bring someone in that shout has, out to Andrew because he's awesome and oh, all of his stuff. He's amazing. He's yeah. one of my favorite people in the area. <laughs> we message back and forth. He's he's awesome. Yeah. Um, but if I bring someone in that has classically trained baking and then I put them on gluten free or gluten, especially gluten free vegan. No, it's a completely oh, yeah. different animal. They don't understand it. I'd rather have someone that has no experience mm. because baking vegan is a whole nother situation that they don't teach. Uh, my professor from school, the the, the guy, the, the head guy of the school, Michelle, he, uh, I went back to visit in 2017 and um, they had me lecture there for a couple classes. And he says, you know, you are, um, what you do is voodoo. <laughs> He's like, no one can do this on a commercial level. And here you are yeah. doing it. So he was, I mean, it was just a, it was kind of 
affirming because when I was in school there, he told me not to quit my day job. You know? <laughs> right. Yikes. But I mean, well, I mean, because no one really, you know, at the time I was just doing it for a hobby. I yeah. wasn't doing it for a career. Um, well, and that's like I will say from the restaurant tours point of view. The word gluten free was just a huge, or the I guess the double word gluten free, the hyphenated words right. gluten free was just a huge eye roll. Right from the right. server to the kitchen staff to the chef, of course. And I, I, I wanted to figure out why is this an eye roll? Why are people upset at this? And really, it just comes down to preparation and availability and what you have. It's the same thing with vegan menus as well. Right. If you have multiple vegan and or gluten free and or whatever uh, you know options predetermined on your menu and those are what you make then there's no eye roll you're just like okay it's just right. a thing we make it's just like we offer beef and we offer chicken if somebody was like oh i'm allergic to chicken but i eat beef you don't eye roll them you're just like oh yeah well you just have the beef instead or, or a seafood allergy i mean well, you right just, that's yeah. a pretty common thing in general right. Right. so i think it's just about us re-understanding about our offerings and what we feel like is necessary for the community now and, and education you right. educate your 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 wait staff. You educate your chefs. You you let them know the importance of it and not rejecting people. I mean, I have walked out of restaurants before because they were not willing to accommodate. Yeah. Now everyone does, but back you know. And also, no one really like listen talking to the the listeners driving right now in their car or whatever. Some of you, do you really know what gluten free actually is? Do you know what gluten is? Because right. <laughs> that. I think nowadays probably the answer is a lot higher. I think more people do, but for a long time people are like, I don't, I don't know, is is rice? Is, I don't know. Is they, wait, hold on. Is, yeah. If if you over whip potatoes, it becomes glutinous, right? So that's not gluten. It's a glutinous fiber, but it's not gluten. No. And so like so the word can translate too. Like if you yeah, if you have really really whipped things, then they're like, oh, that creates a gluten starch inside. But it's like, but that's not gluten free. That's not something that someone would be allergic to. Right. So so like there's just yeah, education Understanding. understanding gluten is a protein in wheat. There you go. Okay. It's a protein. It's very, very small. Um, I think one of my biggest pet peeves are local places that say, oh, yeah, I make gluten-free cupcakes, even though they have wheat in their facility and they bake with regular wheat flour. It's not gluten-free. It is wheat-free. Yeah. It is not gluten-free. You're jumping on a trend. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really wish the FDA could crack down on that because it's really not um, – it, it's false advertising. Yeah. You, you know, it really, really is. I was going to ask, what does it mean to – to be a gluten-free certified facility? It's a lot. So we do in-house testing uh, weekly on our incoming ingredients, our outgoing, outgoing ingredients. We report to the uh, GFCO, I mean, every quarter, all of our results. Um, you know, we're really particular about ingredients. It's not just anything. I mean, it is, we research it to the nth degree. I still do a lot of the uh, the purchasing of the new products, finding new new things that we're going to work with. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and it's it's really expensive. It's not... I would assume that's a serious I just get this to visual be, right? of like Ghostbusters with like the little ectoplasm it is, reading yeah, thing. Yeah, like, it is. <laughs> okay, it is. we're good. Egon says it's fine. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is. I mean, it, there it is a scientific test. I mean, we have to buy the test. It's you know, like I said, it's not, it's not an inexpensive operation. I mean, there are things that have to be done. We have several, several logs of everything that comes in, everything that goes out, traceability, traceability, traceability. Yeah. Right. You know, and and back to the whole education and awareness piece. I mean, if you think about it, ten years ago when you went to a restaurant like a above quick service casual, you always you never got asked, oh, are there any allergies that I need to be aware of? But now it's pretty much every restaurant you go to, they will ask you at the table, oh, yeah. is there any allergies at the table? You know, or yeah. even the reservationness <laughs> will will ask that. So like that's right. a part of the awareness. But so if we're there, then what, like where will we go to next? Will people actually understand what gluten is and maybe have specific prepared dishes or part of the menu to I, be I that? think it depends on the owner. Yeah, you know, and, and the and too. yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's a great chain mm -hmm. out of Massachusetts called Burton's. They have a location, a couple of locations in Charlotte. The owner's celiac. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't sit you down until they ask you what menu you prefer. Right. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. I really mm -hmm. hope they'd open up one here. But I mean, they have several. They have a paleo menu. I mean, it's like, what's your diet? Here's the menu for it. 
Long yeah, ago. and so this, but this ultimately for me, the way I look at it, just getting back to that restaurant side, is this is just hospitality. This is just right. catering to what people want, need, or prefer. You know, and and we've been doing, we've been actually analyzing these conversations in all walks of life. If we're talking about social things, sexual things, uh, environmental things, like the practice of using compostable material as opposed to styrofoam or whatever, it's right. like it's all about selection. It's about options about intention so why wouldn't this be something that is part of the norm now and and not an eye roll it's like we're just we're changing the machine of how we structure everything so that we can all look at each other in the eye and be like cool this is what you like this is what i like all things are available so respectful. have what you want <laughs> respectful respectful right. just be respectful with each other i go back to your eye roll comment because when i've seen the eye roll yeah my order changes back to a salad <laughs> I just don't trust. Uh, yeah, you know you it's know, not going to be treated with the respect that... Because, exactly. So how does that work in a restaurant? I guess, can, like, like, can you truly expect that a dish is gluten-free if it's being prepared in a kitchen where you've got a bunch of wheat being handled everywhere? It depends on the restaurant, right? Um, uh, Angus Barn, Miss Van has a allergy kitchen. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, some restaurants have well, that would be nice, right? But not practical, for right? Most but places. some restaurants have separate prep areas, and they keep things separate, and they advertise that. Yeah, you know, they don't do shared fryers. They don't. It's right. just, and you know, the ones that are. You mentioned Ruddy Duck Tavern. Mm -hmm. They they do gluten free fried seafood. I had it this past weekend. Oh wow! I mean, yeah, it, it's fantastic to know that they they do offer that. You know that, but that is the thing. I mean, just getting down to tactical and practical as a business owner, like to offer all those menus. That's amazing. But just like, I mean, going into a cheesecake factory, for example, mm -hmm. like how do you order for that? If you're not a big chain restaurant, how do you accommodate for all the, having all those ingredients on hand and having all these different menus? It can't be cost effective. I can speak to that. So yeah. uh, I'll say this. When we were first opening up Y Hill, it was my intention, uh, you know, here in the kitchen, uh, MRC helped do all the branding for Y Hill, and and MRC is Mike Rosado Creative. Mike Rosado is a vegan, vegan yeah. and uh, Mike and I we were always talking about food, and I'm such a carnivore, so like I'm trying to like understand Mike's plight, and then also try to you know kind of like reach across the uh, the aisle, the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like blue state, red state, but but like meat eater to vegan. And and I, I asked Mike, I'm like, look, you're a good test subject for just vegan uh, food because you're a huge foodie. You love to dine. You love to go out. But as the joke is, uh, if you're going to go out with a vegan, let them pick the restaurant type of thing because there are very few places that, you know, that a vegan would feel comfortable going to. And so that was my intention when we were creating why Hill is like, let's make this an all or welcome menu in, in the sense that what we mean and like fully all or welcome, including the diet, you know? And so the only rub I have vegans, I'm going to come out at you with this, with this, uh, two vegans is that we put out a menu and even to Mike's credit, he's like, yeah, it's good. It's good. You guys are still a bunch of carnivores trying to make a vegan menu. So it, it looks like that. It's like a heavy metal artist trying to do a pop song or right. something. It's like, eh, okay, you're kind of getting there. But it's like our menu was fine, but it wasn't awesome. And then... It's not like Fiction Kitchen or something. Like right, who a specializes. Vegan yeah. yeah. But okay. then go to... So then it's like, okay, well, now we have all of these menu items that are like good, but not amazing. But like some are awesome, but some are fine. Then the pandemic hit. And then when we... Re shut down and reopened, it's like we got to slim things down. So we got to figure out what is essential, what is not essential. And what we realized was there wasn't enough juice for the squeeze of the ve vegan menu because right. the vegans didn't really come out in droves. Now, that could be our fault because we didn't make good enough vegan menu, but it also could be that maybe there's just not enough vegans in the area to support that much menu share on the on you know on the on the space. Okay, so let me throw a curveball. Please, at you yes. Because I can enlighten you a little bit. Um, we're not a vegan bakery. Forty percent of what we produce is vegan, mm -hmm. and we advertise it as vegan, um, but it's to accommodate allergies. Yeah. Oh, I'm only making the vegan parallel just as a right, categorical. Right, right, right. But you're also when you do vegan, you're also including people with other allergies, with egg allergy, True. with a dairy allergy, and it it, it actually. Um, it just makes people more and people that have a dairy allergy, they know they can eat vegan. 
if they have an egg allergy, they know, already know they can eat vegan. Right. Yeah. So it's just kind of yeah, it's catch-all. Catch yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just makes it. But you. But doing vegan is definitely something that we have grown and we've had to learn from a lot. I mean, there's certain things that are just they're not vegan. Um, honey is not vegan. Right. It comes from an animal, from a bee. Um, certain sprinkles that we used to have, we don't know, we no longer use anymore. They have um, this term. It's a code word. Confectioner's glaze sounds like a bakery. Yeah. Your ingredient. It's not. It's a coating from shellac, which comes from beetle shells, mm. huh. which is part of the animal kingdom. So you can't use that. There are certain things that you would have no idea that. I, so it's it's kind of a, that kid again, eating paste over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, of yeah. well just, I mean, <laughs> I only have a, a sensitivity to it because you know there's like a, a hardcore vegan wines, right? And you know that using for a long time using egg whites as a filter, a filtration mm -hmm. system for wine right. was a practice. And if you want to yeah. be a vegan wine, you can't you do can't. that. Oh, a lot yeah. of people don't know that, and it blows their minds to know that all right. their wine has been filtered through eggs. Yeah. Oh, and not only that, um, uh, 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 sugar. Oh, half the sugar in this country is refined with bone chars. Huh. Right. And yeah, wow. so, to be a true. Vegan is very challenging, right? So we have statement letters from all of our suppliers that say we do not, you know, we don't use bone chars. We it is used through a machine. I mean, it, you know, so right. we have to get statement letters from all of our suppliers. So, as it pertains to your business, right? Not that it's easy, mm -hmm. but it's somewhat easier because you know how much product you're going to produce. You know how right. much you're going to package, right? And so it becomes a little bit more simple versus if you are a restaurateur and like Why Hill probably didn't see the negative aspect of no longer being vegan in terms of their P and L, right? And no, so, it so was, it didn't it, it didn't matter. They're actually busier now than you, right than before. Yeah, yeah. right. Vegans don't want to come here, so more we can do more <laughs> than carnivores, <laughs> and they're eating more steak. That's funny. No, but um. But but like on a nightly basis, when we go back to like how you order product and how you, because when you're a restaurant, you have more waste and you don't want to have waste. Exactly. And so like, how do you keep a menu for vegans, for paleos, for glutens, you know, gluten free? Like that's that's a, that's not a very it's good business, easy business. Really yeah. difficult. I mean, a fine line to walk. I can't imagine having to run. A, a, a you know a restaurant. Well, I mean, that's so even internally. You we need the owner of uh, or the chefs from Burton's. It is yes, but, but we need we need to talk to them about how they <laughs> yeah. do it. But yeah. but like but you JP you mm -hmm. you put yourself in a situation where you specifically as a gluten free bakery like you were specific and intentional about being gluten free. Right. Like it wasn't like you're like this is a a part of my menu and then I also do like very glutinous products as well. It's like no 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 I'm just doing this. So there right. obviously are a lot of restaurants that have intention of being like so like 100% gluten free or 100% vegan or whatever right. and that's that it's the it's the crossovers it's the people trying to be everything to everyone is where sometimes it can be very challenging just because you're biting oh. off a lot to to make at a, at a full level be focused know what you're doing yeah. and and be educated mm -hmm. the educated uh, business owners that know what gluten they understand vegan they understand egg allergies those are the ones in my opinion are the most successful because they include everyone. Everyone talks about it. Yep. Why turn away a customer? That's why I say I could, yeah, I could use almond flour, but why turn away that almond allergy? Yeah. Why turn them away? Yeah. Try to include people. And then everyone kind of feels normal. I think it's been my mission, my like, you know, for years. Yeah. Try to make people feel included. Very pertinent to this time. Um, right. Okay. So you said you do want to have growth, and I know now is more of a maintenance type of scenario as we right. hopefully start to come out of the pandemic at some point. Or right. Who knows? But uh, what is the growth plan, or what would be the next steps? Do you open up new facilities, other places in Johnston County? What's the well? So we're we've been maxed out for a while. I mean, we're in about a five thousand square foot facility. Did you just tell Max to get out? No, <laughs> Max out now. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, Matt's got a lot some of jokes that felt today. that way. Yeah, yeah Max out. So many jokes. Um, we we would like to build a new facility. Um, it's it's in the it's in the the thought process. We were actually going to go an additional facility or a, just a new facility. A new facility okay. that's probably you know double to triple the size. Um, yeah. It will be in Johnston County. I will Ooh, say that yeah. we are staying in there. the The heart of actually where I grew up, which is you know in Johnston County, it's a great place to be. Um, I'm excited for the growth and development 
in Johnson County with 540 coming in around the you know the the Raleigh side and there's going to be this cool food hall yeah. that's coming out the food there food hall coming in there you know that there's up, two of them actually I know and but one up, of them I own so that, right yeah. right and they're that's upgrading the I'm talking about they're upgrading the <laughs> um the you know US 70 to Interstate 42 yeah it's just there's a lot of exciting things happening I think in the next five to six years you're going to see a different Johnson County completely mm-hmm. different yeah totally so yeah we're um but yeah it will stay there it's a great place to be great place to run a business. Um, and we, we really, uh, we've, we've had really good success there. Yeah. Well, so. remember when you expand, like my, uh, like Greg Hay, who worked, uh, who owns, uh, Paragon Wines and also Matua, he told me, he's like, when, when you, when you open, when you expand, you don't just double your, your growth. You go like 10 X, right. you do, you go to the next level. So like, if you're already at 5,000 square feet, maxed out of what you're doing, you're, you should be looking at like. 30, 40, 50,000 oh square feet no, to no. just go world domination style. But why not? Get it out you there know, so that you can distribute anywhere. Or, like I said, to go to two 25,000 square foot places. 20, yeah, two. Just two. Just two. Just, just two. two. Yeah, just two. Yeah, do them in tandem. You know, um, we, uh, there's another bakery um, on the other side of the state that, you know, I kind of followed her a little bit. She's not gluten free at all. But, you know, she went from five thousand her house to 5,000 square feet to 30,000. And half of that 30,000 facility is being used. The other half is empty. And mm. I, 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 you don't right. – that slow growth. Slow growth so we don't close. Yeah. You know? So that's kind of the goal. And, you know, it's um, – I'm sure someone's going to come along at some point. We've already had three or four offers to buy us, and I just – I'm not – not an option right now. From big consumer packaged goods – Companies, um, local, some local uh, people just have offered, and I just have said no. I'm not willing to sell. Like I, you know, I, it's it's my gig. I mean, it's me yeah. right now. It's what I do. Yeah. You know, you got to give your three boys. Uh, by the way, we oh. didn't even get into it, but uh, yeah. you're a, a somewhat newish dad with three two year old yeah. triplets. Tripl- tripl- yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, three little. Uh, uh, I say, you know what, free labor in about you know four or five That's years. Right. You know, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> four or five um, years. Oh, you're putting them to work early. Oh, oh, way. Yeah. Way early, I'm sure they'll they'll be running a little lemonade stand, you know, in front of the <laughs> they can front mix of the bakery. Those flowers by six, you know, dirty little know. smack hands. I know, I know. Send <laughs> Just them don't inside. Stir yeah. with your fingers, yeah. boys. <laughs> S- send the uh, customers inside. Uh, Daddy's got the airplane bottles. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, three. That in um, itself, like, would you share that story with us real quick? Like, you're yeah. So these three boys, how they happened? Yeah, is it was nuts. quite quite a miracle. Um, so uh, I had a surrogate that um, carried for us, um, and uh, it was kind of an interesting story. So we transferred uh, two embryos, my husband and I, and uh, they both stuck and one split on the first try, and like immediate family. So uh, it That's was it so was great. We wild. had a we had a fearless uh, surrogate carry. She was amazing, <laughs> um, and uh, they were born um, July twenty eighth of two thousand nineteen, two months early. And they are in two years are already in the ninety six percentile. Wow! But, I mean, we we feed them really good food. They don't. <laughs> I they can don't, imagine. Yeah, they don't eat canned food. Um, <laughs> yeah. Their first two weeks of daycare. I mean, they did not eat. That you know, you want to see a little toddler refuse Oreos and cheeses. Now they do, but it's just you know, it's kind of funny to <laughs> this watch. This is them. not what Daddy makes. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is not this my isn't a pumpkin yeah. spice. Yeah, uh, yeah. blondie. Yeah. yeah, really. Or is this is this is this sustain, uh, sustainably sourced? Like I really don't think I can eat this. You know. <laughs> Now they're doing fine, but yeah, it was just kind of a transition. But yeah, um, they are proud members of attending the Raleigh School. Okay. Yeah. So um, they are actually at school right now. So, um, but they're doing great. They they love to eat. They eat probably six times a day. <laughs> the yeah, fact that you them. have three kids all yeah. at that age. Yeah. And running your business, I mean that—that's a lot. I know, like we gotta we gotta say goodbye pretty soon to get out of here because you gotta go pick up those kids. I know, I do. I gotta play. I'm, I'm playing soccer dad today, so yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, can't wait. Yeah, Matt's now the assistant head coach of uh, Cam's baseball team. Oh, yeah, shout amazing. out to West Raleigh baseball. Yeah, yeah. This thing is serious. Three times a week, two practices or two games. Yeah, and one Alexander's practice. on a tennis team, and it's three times, four times a week of practice and tournaments. I'm like. Yeah. You know we have lives, right, people? Like, yeah. what's going yeah. on here? It's- this is turning into dad cast right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> really, yeah. really. But uh, we do have a couple things that are, I'll just say one thing. Thank you so much because uh, Shabbat dinner at the Weiss household oh. is going to be special because you brought some gluten-free challahs. So. Yes, we have gluten-free challah bread. And that, yes. that's going to be awesome. That's um, amazing. And then for us to top off, and I'm not sure if this is a gluten-free product, so I'm not sure if we can give it to you right now, but oh. you're, we're going to send you home for when the kids are asleep some uh, proof alcohol ice cream. Oh wow! Which uh, 
they have found a proprietary genius molecular way. You'll probably figure out like the minute you scoop it, knowing your mind, but how to fuse ice cream and alcohol and get this unbelievable texture. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so you think differently about dessert because yeah. you eat ice cream and alcohol all in one. And we have a pumpkin spiced uh, flavor yes, for the holidays do. right oh, now. So thank you. Thank you, guys. You'll go great. home with that, with the Joe Van Gogh coffee, maybe a little uh, Blue Shark vodka. We've got a lot of gifts to give to you. And uh, you, you can get a lot of those things. You can get your uh, proof alcohol ice cream at our favorite place to buy beer, wine, and other things. And that's Triangle Wine Company. Triangle Wine Company with four locations all around the Triangle. Go check them out. Hit them up. Make sure that you tell them that the gents from the NCF&B podcast sent you. And you you might get a healthy little discount because we're good friends. How about that? Well, uh, JP, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for coming all the way out from Johnston County, yes. where we're going to be spending a lot more time. I'm going to see you out there. This is going to be great. Uh, I appreciate you coming into studio. I appreciate all the things that you provide for the community as well, and extending that, s- that sense of hospitality to basically be another tool in the tool belt of a restaurateur or a purveyor of, of business. You do an amazing thing for the community. So thank, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, everybody, when you're out there, you already know. You see, look at the billboard or uh, find yourself some JP pastry and you will eat very merrily. Thanks for listening to the NC F&B Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes and remember, five stars are encouraged.